In this small tutorial, we will use Unity's built-in particle system to create a spray effect. While doing this, we will go through some basic procedures that will help anybody new to game development to get started. Let's start by creating a new project. I'm going to create a 3D UAP project and I'm going to call it Spray. First we will add the starter assets, so go to the asset store and search for starter assets. You will find uh, several of them over here, we're gonna use this one, starter assets character controllers. I've already uh, added it to my account and um, I've already downloaded it, so I can now open it in Unity. Unfortunately, this button doesn't work, but we can go to the package manager and uh, I can find it in my assets. It's over here. So I'm going to import it. This is using the new input system, so we need to restart uh, Unity. Okay, now so that we've uh, added the starter assets package, we can go to package manager and go to the uh, starter assets package over here. You have some samples that you can import. And this gives us um, a scene for the third person uh, controller. So we can open that. And then we can just uh, play this uh, example scene. Now let's start by changing this uh, boring robot to some more natural character. So I'm going to choose this character. I'm going to download this as if the X for Unity. Just a T pose without any animations. And let's create a folder for that. Let's call it um, characters. We're gonna put our new model in here. Okay, so I've added the downloaded model into the character folder. And now we can just drag it into the scene. You see that we need to extract the uh, textures. Also the hair looks kind of shiny, so let's also extract the materials. And let's edit the uh, hair material, make it less shiny. Okay, that looks good. So now that we have a new model, we can replace the uh, robot with our new character. The robot... Um, meshes inside this uh, player armature so we can uh, just put our um, new character in that uh, armature as well if you now play the uh, the demo again you'll see that uh, the new character is following the robot but first thing we need to do is put it at the uh, zero position. And now um, also uh, it's not animating. And therefore we need to change the avatar. Um, 
of the um, the robot to the uh, to a new avatar that uh, knows how to uh, move this new model. We don't have that avatar yet, so we need to extract it, create it. So let's go to the model again and go to rig and choose humanoid and create an avatar from this model. So now we have an avatar and we can uh, change this armature avatar for our new avatar. Now let's see what happens now. Okay, you see that uh, we're now moving the new character and now it's time for the robot to leave. So these two elements were connected to the robot. So I've removed them. And now we have um, the same uh, animation, but with our new imported character. Okay, now let's give our guy a spray can in his hands. I go to the site Turbo Squid, where I can download some free models. Let's search for spray cans and select uh, free models with the FBX format so we can easily import them into Unity without converting them first. Let's go with this spray can. I'm going to download it. It's over here and um, it's got the FBX file in this zip and also the textures. So we're going to download both of them and add them to our project. I've unzipped the uh, FBX and the textures and I put them in this folder. So let's drag this spray can into the scene. You can see that it contains some stuff that we don't want, like this background. So let's remove that first. I guess this is the only one that's needed, so we can remove these. And actually we can even... Unpack this prefab. And then move this over here. So this is the only thing we need to spray paint. And... Um, now we need to put it into the guy's hands. So let's find the uh, hand in the bone structure. This is the right hand. We can put it in here. So let's make this a child of the right hand. And now we can move it to the proper position. It's a bit too big, so we need to scale it. Something like this. Now we need to put it into the proper position, but it's best to do that at runtime so we can see what it really looks like when he has the can in his hand. So now let's run the application. And you see that it's not properly placed at the moment, but we're gonna change that. We also need to rotate it. Okay, this looks good. So
let's save that. We changed the settings at runtime, so now before we need to, we need to before we stopping the uh, application, we need to copy the, uh, the properties. Copy component, and now we can stop. And now we can paste those component values back in, and you see that it's now at the right position. So next time we run the game, the spray can is going to be in the proper position. Okay, our guy can run around with the spray can now. But before he can actually spray, we need an animation that shows the guy spraying. Because now he's just walking with uh, the spray can in his hand. But he needs to stick out the spray can in order to be able to spray it. So let's create an animation for that with uh, Cascadeur. Okay, so now let's open our uh, character in Cascadeur. So we can create an animation. I'm going to import the model. I'm going to rig it. Okay, it's done. So now we can just um, create our animation by dragging these uh, joints. Let's go to the first keyframe. Actually, this animation will consist only of one keyframe. So it's actually more like a pose and not a real animation. So we'll put this hand forward for the spraying. Something like this, I think. Let's also change the position of the other hand a little bit. Okay, I think this will do. Oops. Put the hand straight and also bend the fingers a little bit. Therefore, I'm going to this mode and then select the joints of the fingers and rotate them a bit. So the spray can f can fit right into this uh, hand. Change the thumb a bit as well. Okay, I think this is fine for um, putting a spray can in this hand. So now let's um, export it without meshes. We're just going to save the animation. I've saved the Cascadeur animation in this folder animations. It's over here. Before we can use it, we also need to rig it. We can rig it to the avatar that we've already created. And now you can see that uh, the animation, which is actually a pose, is displaying over here. So it's working properly now. And we can add that animation as a new layer to the animator that we are currently using. 
Um, so this is the animator controller. It has a base layer. And we will add a new layer. Let's call it spray. And uh, on that new layer, we will add the uh, spray animation. So that's it. This layer will override this base layer. So as soon as we make this layer active, it will change to the spraying pose instead of the walking animation that's normally used. We need a key to use uh, for the spraying. So if you take a look at this uh, player armature, it contains also player input. We have an action map over here. And we can add a new action called spray. And we can bind that to, for example, the left mouse button. Now we can choose uh, for the action type to be a button or a value. A button is actually something like jump that you click once and then um, it will just do the jumping. But we don't need to detect if it's uh, not clicking anymore. But for in our case, we want to have a value because we don't only want to uh, have the uh, on mouse down event, but we also want to have the on mouse up event when the user stops clicking the mouse, because then we will stop spraying. So it will not be just a, a single spray event, but it will be a continuous spraying until the player releases the um, left mouse button again. So change this to value, and now let's save it. We can just enable auto save. And now we also need to change this uh, start assets input script that's over here. It's storing the um, value of all the inputs at the moment. It has jump and sprint, but it doesn't have spray yet. But we can easily add that. It's uh, comparable to jump or to sprint. So we can just copy that code and put it in here. Let's search for sprint in this uh, code. You can see this method is called on and then the name of the uh, action map uh, item. So we called it spray, so it's going to be called on spray. And then uh, we use that to call yet another method. That's how they do it here. So let's just do that as well. And in that method, they're gonna set the uh, value of the uh, the state. So in our case, the spray state. Okay, this should do it. So now we can. Uh, run the application again and check if uh, the spray uh, button is detected properly. You can see over here that it has a tick box. Let's go to those values and you can see that when I press the left mouse button you can see that the box is ticked. When I jump you can see that it's very, very um, very quickly showing that it's uh, become on but it doesn't stay on so that's the difference between the value and the button this is really a button and the sprint and the spray are values so they stay longer time active now we need to make that um, Spraying a pose active as soon as we press the left mouse button, so we are ready to spray. So let's go to the third person controller. And uh, we have this update function, we can add some code to that. So let's create a new function, call it spray. 
let's call that from uh, the update function. And um, this in the spray function, we're gonna check for the uh, if the um, the spray key is uh, down. So we have that value in uh, in the input. Let me check what it's called in here. Should be something like input. Data as its inputs. That's the uh, class that's storing the the input values. So it has the public spray. So we can use that to check if we are spraying or not. And if we are spraying, then we should set the animation layer to uh, one. So. Uh, I think it is called animator. This is a reference to the animator. And we're going to set the layer weight of the first layer to 1. So that should uh, activate the spray. So let's see if it works. Yeah, you can see that uh, the spray can is now uh, moved and the guy is in the position where he is just uh, about to spray. But there is a few issues with this at the moment. We're not going back to the uh, walking pose. So let's fix that first. can do that by, uh, if we're not spraying, resetting the layer weight to zero for that first uh, layer. Okay, so now at least our um, animation is reset as soon as we uh, stop uh, hitting the left mouse button. But you see that it's kind of immediately uh, moving to that uh, spray position. That's not really natural. So what we need to do is uh, slowly change the animation layer uh, from 0 to 1. So it will blend with the uh, old animation layer of the running and walking. So uh, let's go to the code again. We can uh, make this code a bit more simple. I just uh, setting the layer weight of the first layer if uh, input spray uh, is true then it should be 1, otherwise it should be 0. So this is the same code as uh, the part with the if statement, but a bit shorter. And now instead of using this uh, 1 and 0 value immediately, we will do a linear interpolate lerp from the current layer weight to the 1 or the 0. And we will do that in delta time times 20. You can change this value if it's going too fast or too slow with the changing of the one animation to the other. So let's see how this works out now. Yeah, you can see that now it's moving slowly but quick enough from that uh, walking pose to the spraying pose. By the way, when we use the spraying pose you can see that the can is not properly rotated it's a bit uh, under an angle um, so let's change that we can do that by uh, just making the spray like permanent for now 
So now um, the spraying position stays on. We can then use the scene view to rotate the uh, the can. see what this looks like from up close yeah I think this is fine so um, just save this uh, new um, position and rotation so let's um, copy the component and paste it back in and now if we remove this uh, value again you can see that now it's uh, it's just about right Another thing is that we can uh, also move in this uh, spraying position. That's not the intention. This of course looks very stupid, so we should disable movement as soon as we're trying to spray. can simply put an if statement around this uh, move uh, function so if we're not spraying then we can move otherwise we will just stand still okay you can see that we're no longer moving when we're spraying but actually we are only spraying at one position now because we're standing still what would be nice if that we would move along with the camera so that we can spray around us now we can only spray in one direction then we need to move again and spray in another direction so what we want to do is that when we turn this camera the character will also turn around we will do that only when we're not moving so we can put an else statement over here and what we will do then is the following we will take the position of the camera and the position of the character and from those two when we subtract them from each other we get the direction so this is the direction the camera is facing and now we can rotate to that position at least for the x and the z axis the y axis should still be zero should be pointing upwards but we will not uh, rotate all at once to that position so again we will use that uh, lerp function so we will slowly move from the current forward position to that new look at direction so it will all seem very smoothly and natural let me show you what i mean so now when we stop and we look around you can see that the character is moving in that direction but not immediately so we can also see him from up front a little bit if we want because the camera is moving faster than the character but finally the character will always be facing with his back to the camera and this way we can just spray around like this and we can spray in multiple directions now for the main part of this uh, tutorial let's add the particle system we put it in the right hand just like the spray paint so let's create an empty game object over here let's call it particle system and now we can add a, a particle system to that you can see that it's already doing something but it's not quite there yet we need to change a lot of things uh, for instance the particle 
material. We can use the default sprite for that. And we will change uh, some more properties. But uh, it's just a bit of fiddling around with the properties until we get the, the right uh, the, the right um, effect for showing uh, a spray effect. So I will just um, experiment with it a little bit and we'll get back to you after I'm done. Okay, I think this is about right. I've put this uh, to looping, but I will remove that later. But it's just uh, so I can keep looking at uh, this uh, particle animation to make it right. We're using different colors. We have a duration of 0 0.2. We have a lifetime of 7. You can copy all of these properties that I have over here. And then you will end up with the same uh, spray effect as I have. If you want to have uh, another effect, you can always tweak it, of course. There's uh, lots of possibilities to change these uh, effects. So I create bursts. You can see them over here. As a shape, I use a cone. Because it's just like a cone that's widening when you uh, are spraying. We limit the velocity over lifetime. In the beginning it's very fast, but later it gets more slow. We also change the size over lifetime. We start very small when it gets out of the can, and then this uh, spray just uh, expands rapidly. And then we have also collision effect over here. We have dampening. And finally for the rendering, we're using that default particle. And uh, look at the speed scale and length scale over here. They are customized as well. Let's take a look at the code that we create to use that spray, that particle system. I've made a reference to the particle system in the third person controller script. I've also added uh, a variable called delay spray to give a bit of delay in between the sprays. We could also use that looping that you just saw, but uh, I will uh, just uh, stop the spraying itself, play it only once, and then we need to uh, start it again by calling this play method and we will do that with a delay so we have a delay of 0 0.2 seconds and only after that we will again uh, use that particle system and you can see over here that we have actually different start colors we have this one and this one and um, if we would use the looping, we would use just one start color because we would start uh, the uh, animation only, the particle system only once, and then it will continue to use that uh, that same start color. So now, in order to use both these colors, we like manually created a loop with a little delay in between. Um, also take note of this uh, character. Uh, I created a layer by using add layer. I created a layer called player. And this layer I've excluded from the particle system from the collisions. So over here, the, it doesn't collide with the player because otherwise the um, beam of the particles would possibly collide with the player or with the can and uh, then they would uh, not uh, shoot out like they used to do. Also note that I've changed the uh, field of view a bit to get closer to the uh, person and change the shoulder offset a little bit. So now let's take a look at the final uh, application. 
Over here you can see that we can now shoot that particle system. Shoot the particles and they if they hit a wall, they will just start to fall down. This concludes the particle system tutorial. Thank you for your attention and look out for any upcoming videos on this channel.